Hey, what's going on YouTube? Lionel here. Um, and I just finished my 1740 review and just really wanted to jump right into this while it was still fresh on my head. Um, I, I sort of referred to the sample program here. But I really want to talk today about how to save money on buying fragrances. Um, I just think, uh, here, here's, here, here's what I mean. If you guys are watching this video and you know who Mark is and you know who Coach Rob is and you know who Dan Mish is and you know who uh um who else is out there you know uh man up in, in in indiana and i mean everywhere if you know us if you know these reviewers uh lupe franchisi um who some other guys that i enjoy any of those guys uh dave if you know any of these people that means that you're probably have the same type of passion and addiction that we all have for fragrances uh with that said uh, what I'm seeing a trend of, there's a, a just an influx of selling perfumes. Now, don't get me wrong. I take advantage of people selling their perfumes. So, I mean, I, I really don't want to make this video. But on the flip side, I really think, um, you know, there's a responsibility for some of us, especially as we started to dive, as the fragrance community has kind, of, kind of went from, you know, designer, middle of the line, middle of the road fragrances, some very high-end fragrances like 1740, which I just reviewed, and Bond and Amouages and 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 uh, you know some of the private lines from Hermes, and Dior, and Chanel. Those things are very very expensive. This hobby is very 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 expensive. Um, you know the creeds and all of those things. So with that, um, I want to give you three things. Uh, three recommendations that I have just from my personal perspective you can take it with a grain of salt uh, this isn't some rigid rule or anything that I've always followed but here are some things that I really really recommend you do number one if you watch a video and you become very very passionate about a fragrance without sampling it without sampling I'm saying you have not sampled it you've not went through a couple of samples and you just head over heels mouth uh, salivating type of passion uh, you just you saw it you really really liked it I, I recommend I recommend you get in a split not only that you don't have to even get in a split you can start a split of a specific fragrance that really has caught your interest especially if it's really hot on YouTube if it's hot in the review community you will not have a problem splitting a fragrance so my number one recommendation is these high-end fragrances stay away from full bottles. Stay away from full bottles of Muscat Vajour. Stay away from full bottles of Aventus. Stay away from full bottles of Interlude Man. Stay away from full bottles of 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 Black Afghano and Duro. Stay away from them. And the number one reason why is because you're going to be stuck with that bottle, or you're going to start stretching yourself financially to get the other bottles. Or you're going to end up selling that bottle to get another bottle that you've now found passionate. And uh, there's there's about a 50% chance you're going to be dissatisfied with the product you receive. And now you're stuck with a full bottle of it. And the retail value just kind of goes down. If, 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 if once you touch it, open it, and spray it. I'm just saying selling a used bottle is just a little more. It's, it's going to cost you money to do that. So if you're going to spend the money and you're going to lose the money, Lose it on a 5, 10, 15 mil decant because just about anything out there will be split. And even if you don't, you can even ask, hey, guys, I really want to split this. Can you know anybody who's interested in splitting? So um, there's enough information out there. There's enough fragrance forms on Facebook and YouTube alone that would allow you to split. My second recommendation is don't blind buy anything, anything over about a dollar and fifty a meal listen to what I'm telling you don't blind buy anything that's over a dollar and fifty a meal just don't do it I mean you're, you're, you're the risk the dissatisfaction increased on each additional incre incremental dollar that you spend so if you spent forty dollars on a fragrance and you don't like it and it's a hundred meals hmm, it's forty dollars I can make it up I don't go to dinner this weekend if you spend two hundred dollars on a bottle and you don't like it that's a big gap. I mean, that the, the that's a hundred. That that's that's you know a five hundred percent markup just about on that same fragrance. You you, you don't want to do that. So I I just recommend you don't blind buy anything that's over a dollar fifty a mil. 
And even then, that's high. I would tell you to stick around no more than, than, than 50 mils on a dollar and 50 a mil. Don't buy, buy, buy anything over $100 because the, the chance of you not liking it just goes up, right? And then, I, you know, and with the trend of guys selling stuff so immediately, there's things that I bought, like, in my 1740 review, there's things that I have, and I was just like, hmm, I don't really particularly care for this fragrance. But I, I left it on the shelf, and as my nose started to change, and as my taste starts to change, hmm, let me go back and revisit it, just like steak. As I've gotten older, my steak, my steak has gotten more pink, pinker, I don't think pinker is a word. So the, the, it, it's gotten lighter almost each additional year that I've, uh, you know, because I'm around different people, I'm in different crowds, you know, wine and all of these other things affect the palate. So now my taste buds are actually starting to change and I'm starting to appreciate some of those things a bit more. So that's the recommendation. Two, don't, don't blind buy expensive fragrances. Don't do it. Rule number three, if you blind buy something and you don't like it, just keep it. Just I, I, it's already a sunk cost to you anyway, right? If you bought it for $200, you may get $170, $150. What's a, it's going to be the same. Like The price isn't going to change in a year, so you can still sell it at $170 a year if you still don't like it. But I recommend you do is if you blind buy it and you have it, just test it for a little while. Give it a little time to develop. Get your nose a chance to change. Um, you know, and, Unless you've got 10 mils, 15 mils that you're just trying to immediately get rid of. If you've stuck with a bottle of Must Ride with you, you don't like it, just keep it. You never know what may happen in a year's time. Your nose may change. Something may click in your head and your nose, and it just becomes a fragrance that you really, really like. So, again, to, to reiterate, split. Number one, number one, split. Split anything and everything that you possibly can. Number two, number two, don't blind buy anything over a dollar fifty a meal. That, that, that's not a hard, fast number, but it's just a number that I recommend. And finally, 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 don't sell stuff so, so quickly. Don't be so quick to look at something, judge it. If the notes appeal to you, and if one of your favorite reviews, who you have a lot of taste in common with, gave something high praise, just give it a little time to develop. Let it sit on your skin. You know, don't really worry about what other people think. I think a lot of times people are responding to what other folks think about their fragrance, not what their own nose really appreciates. So, uh, you know, I, there's quite a, a so funny over the last year, my collection has grown on stuff that really doesn't get me more compliments. It's really grown on stuff that gets me less compliments, but that I really appreciate a lot more. Ooh, must black ooh. Those types of fragrances are just fragrances that my nose really, really enjoys. And I enjoy wearing them, and they add a layer of sophistication to me. And I know I'm differentiating myself from a lot of my peers who may have a couple of bottles of, you know, the common thread fragrances. So, um, also, a bonus point. So, point four is this. Try independent houses. Sonoma Scent Studio. Um, CJ Scents. Uh, Sweet Anthem. Um, uh, what's another one that's out there? Uh, 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 Don Spencer Hewitt's, uh, 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 Hewitt's. A, a lot of these fragrance houses, there, there's a lot of these small independent fragrance houses that sell things to 15, 20, 25 mil increments that they may be a bit higher, $2 a mil, but you're still taking off a smaller bite. Not only that, you're also experiencing something more of the artistic nature of fragrance development. So, that's my point. Um, I'm, I really just want to save you guys money and I want to save you time and disappointment, um, especially as I start to get into more of the artistic side of fragrances that I'm starting to really enjoy. So um, that's it for me. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Also, if you have, um, uh, check out some of the, the houses that I mentioned, Sonoma Scent Studio, CJ Scents. Just Google them. Or you can find them on Facebook, um, um, Sweet Anthem. Those are there are a lot of great fragrance houses out here that aren't really getting touched, and that really kind of speaks to Coach Rob and my man who was doing the you know the little fast thing back in the day, uh, cat up in Atlanta. I think he is. Uh, um, can't think of his name right now, but a lot of them was talking about just some of the redundancy in the fragrance review community. Get out there and try some houses and experience some some houses like these. Story Day perfumes, the ones I mentioned, some of the indie houses. 
and really get your nose out there, man, and see you you may be really, really surprised on what's out there. So that's it for me. I appreciate it. God bless.